We'll go ahead and call this uh, meeting to order today. Um, first uh, on our list is a public hearing. Uh, but before that, uh, I need a motion to suspend the rules. Moved. I'll second. Moved by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion? Yes, I'd uh, suggest that on A, on the policy agenda, that we remove that item. And this was part of the Planning Commission report Thursday, and they rejected that, and they called for a workshop for themselves. So instead of us having anything and voting with it, I'm ready to uh, let the Planning Commission send us something to us, then we'll go from there. So I'm just asked to remove A. There's a request to remove A uh, before we read the revisions. Uh, does anyone have any additional discussion? The reason for the removing it? Is this was uh, at the, the same number was part of the layover district that the Planning Commission addressed Thursday. And they rejected that particular plan, called for a workshop to relook at all this and bring it back to the table. Okay. But it, my understanding is, Mr. Creel, you may be able to explain a little better. This, this is a text change that affects, I guess, any new, newly constructed uh, the structures that are used for short-term rentals and an additional egress and point of egress and, and uh, ingress and ingress or whatever. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, any, any new or existing, if the city council votes to, uh, planning commission city council votes to approve a short-term rental in a single family structure uh, that's been built in RM20 or RM30, and that structure is above the ground, it's an elevated structure, all this language does is requires them to have a second emergency exit. That's all this is. This is part of the, this number is part of that planning commission report, and they rejected it. So don't say, you can say what you want there. You cannot start putting in pieces in a list as short term rental districts and things like that. That is not, this here just needs to be clarified. Send it all back to us at one time. Don't do these pieces. That's how we get ourselves in trouble. We don't need to vote on this. It doesn't mean a thing. Wait until they come back with their workshop and tell them what they're going to do with the whole plan. Not piece here, piece there, piece there. So no, I asked y'all to remove it for that particular reason. Director, can you confirm with Councilman Lawrence is saying that this was rejected by the Planning Commission? So what is the Planning Commission contemplating other than this piece that Mr. Lawrence is referencing? the overlay district which is from the bridge to Rodenburg and only those areas that are zoned uh, single family or RM10 went before the Planning Commission last week the Planning Commission heard from both sides there were 15 people there to speak in favor of the overlay district and there were 20 plus that spoke in opposition to it and at the end of the meeting the Planning Commission voted to send it to committee which is typically what they do in a case like this they want to make sure that they've got all the information. Sending it to committee allows them to discuss it in a round table type setting where they can ask questions and we can provide information. So right. it's uh, it's going to committee. That was the decision. Mr. Lawrence, you still have the floor. Thank thank you for giving me. Well, according to the vote, it was three to eight. They voted against it. And it didn't pass anything. And this number 
this case number is part of what uh, they discussed at the meeting. They didn't separate anything and then vote this by itself. Okay. They did not do that. That's why you cannot put this on the table when they rejected that particular thing at the Planning Commission. That's all I'm saying. I'm okay. not killing nothing. Let them look at it, bring it back to us. That's it. I just don't think it don't need to be on here. That's all. So I'm asking for y'all just to remove it. Sure. Mr. Gond, you second it. Do you have anything to add? I second it. Um, of course, I wasn't there, so I don't know. And um, in a case like this, I mean, you're saying that this was totally separate from, are you, are you basically saying this is separate from what George is talking about? Yes, that's correct. This is, okay. this is just adding a safety feature to any houses that may come forward that happen to be in commercial if, zoning. Or, if a house is elevated, you need to have a front and back exit or a front and side exit. That, that's I mean, that's just saying. simple. That's simple there. Um, but but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering what George is talking about because I'm trying to make sense let of me, it. Let me tell you some of the stuff because I paid attention to planning commissions that they had stuff listed on that planning commission. They had, they had short term uh, STR district. There ain't no such thing as this. So you have to watch what you pass in these things here. When you pass stuff right now that he's saying it's not there, they never separated and never voted on this by itself. Never did that at that meeting, at the Planning Commission meeting. They the one rejected it. Not me. I wasn't there. <laughs> Is the reference number we're looking at any different than the short-term rental? Uh, yes. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, these were addressed at two separate Planning Commission meetings. One, one had nothing to do with the other. Mr. Lawrence, where, where, how are you? This was Thursday at the meeting when I got the package. This is one of the numbers listed on Thursday's Planning Commission meeting. So when they had this separate, I don't know. And they denied this package they had on the table Thursday. This, the Planning Commission did. And this number was one of the numbers. This is September 1st. So I'm okay. going by what they had the packages they had and what they dealt with. All right, any other discussion? I do. I have some discussion about, I actually read the Planning Commission discussions and I didn't see a vote on it, but all that we have in the record is the public hearing. So there's no, there's not gonna be a vote in the public hearing. So I don't see a reflection of what that vote was to confirm or um, even corroborate what, or to corroborate what, what he's saying. However, if we, why is my mic so loud? <laughs> it's you, it's not the mic. Is it? It's um, working. <laughs> well, are we going to discuss this we are. again? I, the substance of the thing, I'm not for removing it if we're going to have a discussion about the substance of it. Perhaps we table it. If you, can we get more information? Well, I think we just allow, don't remove it as per George's um, request, removing it from the, the agenda, and I would recommend keeping it on the agenda yeah. and discussing it at that point, and then at that point we can table it. Thank you. If you'll look at uh, if you'll look at page eleven of the court reporter's minutes, you can see that it was approved unanimously. Page eleven. Okay. I may have a different page system than you, but that's all right. I take your word for it, Jerry. Um, regardless, I would like to discuss the um, the substance of the text change, okay. uh, which I don't think is appropriate for right now. Right now we're just discussing whether we should or should not remove it from the agenda. And I would request that the council not um, sustain George's motion and leave it on the agenda so we can discuss it then. And if so, uh, Mr. Lawrence, I'd be happy to support tabling it if there is a, a, a solid basis for tabling it. That's all I have. All right, anyone else have any comments? There being none, uh, I don't think there's a consensus to remove it, Mr. Lawrence, uh, you know, at this time, but we can discuss it and, and take whatever action when it comes up on the agenda. So um, any other discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Court would, the clerk would read the revisions. To the policy agenda, we're removing 4C, resolution appointing Stacy Perry to the Bluxy Planning Commission. To the consent agenda, we're substituting 5H, resolution for the Seafood Industry Museum. Substituting 5O, change order number four with Nikkei's brothers. Substituting 5R, change order number five with Nikkei's brothers. 
substituting 5S resolution for change order number six with Nikase Brothers, adding 5T resolution rescinding resolution number six 2022 for ARPA funds, adding item 5U resolution authorizing submission of a grant application for ARPA funds, adding 5V resolution rescinding resolution number six 2122 pertaining to ARPA funds, adding 5W Resolution authorizing a grant application for ARPA funds. Adding 5X, resolution rescinding resolution number 61922 pertaining to ARPA funds. And adding 5Y, resolution authorizing a grant application for ARPA funds. Chair, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. All right. Motion was made by Mr. Lawrence. It was seconded by Mr. Barrett. Any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's report. Uh, welcome everyone to our meeting and uh, no report. Thank you. Uh, council reports, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, I had a couple questions for the mayor. On the, the CPA, we ever get the report back for our the financial report, have we ever corrected anything? I, I think it has been, I don't think our accountant is here, our director is here, but I think the uh, prior year stuff has been corrected and I think finalized in the 21 audit right now. Yeah, because we need to have that report as soon as possible. And speaking of reports, I know Nathan said that uh, Keith Hurd has been supposed to be given his report. Have we got anything from Keith Hurd or he's still invisible? He's not invisible, and, okay, and we're I mean, working on that report. report. Like but but let, let me let me go back. The 22nd should be uh, here by the end of the month. The total prior year stuff, as well as the 21 audit, should be uh, draft in our hands very shortly, within a week. We spend a lot of money. I'd like to see something come back from it, you know? You know, we have seen some things come back with it. We, we will update you on all of those Definitely. things when appropriate. Yeah, well, we'll make sure that. And I know we talked about the... Uh, Going to Brookside and getting any money for them to earn ninety-two thousand dollars. You have having a plaque put down by the memorial with the twelve names on it. Instead of keeping up the palm trees or a dime, you said you're looking to doing that, and maybe we could put a plaque down there with the, all the other memorials at the, the small craft hall. Yep. We were looking at uh, the total. We look at the uh, the whole configuration of the the park and those kinds of things. But we'll we'll give you a report on that. Okay. And have we did uh No, we haven't done do, anything on that yet. You want to do one, maybe at the same time, plaque for uh, Gwen Galat's walkway? So just, no, not going to do that yet. We, we, we're working on the Sanger for that. Well, so we do you want me to, you say, I need we're, to do that? Do you want me to just run a resolution to do it? Or, you know, I'm just asking you. I told you my, you know, my thoughts on, on what we needed to do for, for Gwen and, and her cause with the Sanger, and, and that's preferred. To uh, to that situation for her. Well, no, I'm doing both. It's not a bad thing. So, and uh, I know we've been working on the uh, the beach a lot. Are we going to have this all crew uh, cleaned up for cruising the coast? We hope so. <laughs> you hope so. <laughs> no, it's done. It except for the uh, the the walkways to the beach, everything is done. Yeah. And, now uh, we go, now there, there's some things we want to do, and in cooperation with M dot between. Oak Street and the small craft harbor to uh, get it ready from finishing standpoint. Yeah. Working with um, MDOT in what needs to be done to uh, totally uh, cover that and, and keep people from parking on that with an additional six inch curb in between the existing curb and the sidewalk and seawall. But uh, we're you know, a few weeks away from actually finalizing that. But they're walking it right now. All the uh, the uh, uh, composite boards are installed, and most of the uh, four by fours for the walkway have been installed, but not the, the steps. We're working with Sand Beach in order to get that to uh, you know one foot below the cantilever, and uh, begin the process of uh, the sand replenishment. Okay, and uh, I know we talked about they be replacing a lot of the LEDs like downtown Bluxy, has any other lights we're gonna put down there, like we had these big lights on City Hall when you No, not yet. Again, we, 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 we I mean, attended nice the uh, Main Street, Bluxy, they, the Main Street, the state Main Street program a number of weeks ago, and they came up with some interesting ideas as far as height of the signs, or of the lights, 
and uh, string lights and a couple other things. We're going to try and get a plan to uh, work with them to uh, do what it was recommended. It was a very a lot of people attended that meeting here in in the room, and uh, we're trying to finalize what we can do together for that. You know. Uh, when we uh, get started on looking at all the raises and everything, how, long, how much time do you need to bring something to us about the raises for the, the firemen? Uh, uh, again, so for, the, for the third, we're working on it as we speak, every day. Right. Again, and, you know, it's my intention to take care of all 600 employees and consider the operations of, of the city long-term financially. We're working out the best ways. I mean, the only thing I can say is that, you know, uh, I hope you won't be disappointed in what we come up with, both from a council and a financial situation and a long-term five-year, six-year plan. But there are some creative things that they we're looking at right now. Again, we made some immediate uh, increases available to, to uh, for the police department and some things that we needed to do. And all 600 employees will be in this next work session, like we did last year, between October and January. Uh, to come out with what needs to be done. Then I know the fellow councilmen are all ready to get something started to look at that. It's so started. They're all ready. It's so started. Ready. Yeah, well, we, we check in with Jerry. We, not a problem. Yeah, you can recheck with me. Yeah. You can come to everyone. We'll, as we'll as, as I mentioned to the president, I'm happy to discuss the nuts and bolts and details that we're looking at because we can be some creative. One at a time, two at a time, three at a time. Four can't get in, but three can come in. So I invite you to work with us and to understand what we're looking at because it's, it's, it will be creative well that's our job to work together yeah well, that's what we're supposed to do well you know again instead of talking about you I'm, i invite you to come in and work with me and in, in showing you what we're going to do be glad to well i'm here in that yeah. office pretty much all the time that's good yeah. glad you're still there yeah uh, and peter what happened to this woman house did you give it away yet give it back to them since nobody's done anything for the last year and a half at all no we we we're getting some estimates on the cost based on the appraisal that we've done. I can, I'll share the, uh, the assessment with you of the, of the damages. Right. It was not, not as bad as perceived, the, dam the total uh, remediation and repairs. Um, one last thing, uh, welcome all the firemen. Uh, the Fireman Day Parade Sunday was awesome. It's 130 years of tradition. Y'all kept going. Everything was fine, polished up, looked great. Thank you all. That's it. Mr. Gaines. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, acknowledge two things. Um, I went to the Biloxi High football game Friday. It was a great game, real close nail biter. And I wanted to just extend our prayers out to Coach Santamont. Coach Santamont been around a long time and um, he's battling, he has a real serious battle on his hands, so we want to keep him in prayer. And the other thing is um, uh, the mayor and myself, we went to the Kiesler uh, annual 75th anniversary ball, and uh, that, was a, that was a great uh, great thing. I'm happy to be, represent Kiesler Air Force Base, which is in Ward 2. Um, I had the pleasure of sitting beside one of my former commanders right before I got out, so that was an honor and pleasure to be there with uh, General Rand, which was uh, one of our higher up generals uh, at that time. So thank you, that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Newman. Mr. Deming. Mr. Mayor, uh, I usually speak with uh, Mike regarding the Campbell Drive issue with drainage. Do you, are you familiar with yes, the issue? We, we toured it, right. but with regard to getting engineering and getting some uh, proposals to repair it. I know he mentioned a couple of pr proposals, and then I, I showed him the Campbell Drive issue where it was diverted. Do we know if we've gotten any, if he's if he's reviewed it or taken anybody out there? I saw some City of Bluxy trucks out there, so I don't know if we've actually looked at uh, using the drain that's already there down Campbell Drive. I think our last, uh, in, in conversation with him, there's a, you know, a, a, a total, costly solution and there's one that that may be you know doable given cooperation so uh, i don't know the nuts and bolts of where we are but we know have, they're working they're have working them reach them. out to me and, and tell me right. where we're at and give me an update on what we what we think we can do to get that done we'll do it um 
if we have any update on paving over on Ravenwood and um, Oak Lawn? Well, you know, again, we've visited a number of uh, paving and, and looking at the bond and some of the other things we can do and trying to get some estimates on you know, the two or three things in each one of, you know, at least we've driven the neighborhoods uh, in each ward. Well, the, the, uh, the last response I got is we were getting it scheduled. And do we have any update on that? And if so, I, I don't have right. The mic would be the one, and I think he's okay. Give me face. ask him for an update as well on those. That's all I have, President. Mr. Tisdale, uh, yes, a couple of things. Uh, Mayor, our next meeting will be Tuesday on the 4th of October, and I know I've been pressing you for an appointment on the tree committee uh, for Ward 5 for the past couple of months. It'd be great if we had a name on that agenda. Thank you, sir. The uh, other thing, Mr. Creel, just two things I wanted to follow up on, just a comment. Um, the status of 451 Cove Drive and also the status of 2567 River Place Boulevard. I just know there are issues with sometimes securing of those properties and where they are in terms of community court or code enforcement. Um, Folks in those neighborhoods are curious and, and they worry. I'll get you Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Barrett? Um, just a couple things. I went out to Eagle Point Park today and uh, they're finishing up the paving of the parking lot. The playground has started to be installed. It's looking really, really nice. Um, it's all coming together. Thanks to um, everyone involved in that. Um, secondly, um, <clears throat> I know that we've been running behind with um, with our public works, our, our road and um, ditches, but now that grass is slowing down, um, we have several um, um, issues that, that we've covered before, the curve on Oak Lawn, Boyette, and then the, um, the place that washes out on um, Wash Fayard. Once that's <clears throat> the grass cutting slows down, if we could you make it a priority to try to get those fixed um, just so that whenever we start having the heavy rains again we don't have to wash I worry about the roads washing out and then um, I look forward to working with the council and the administration on um, getting these raises in effect as soon as possible for the rest of the employees that's all I have thank you mr. Barrett I've got a few things I, I want to acknowledge uh, coach St. Amon as well I'm in a fantasy football league with them uh, with a bunch of uh, retired coaches uh, from Biloxi, from, from different, from baseball and, block, and football and the other. And he started out 2-0. and oh. He's 2-0. and oh. He's undefeated in the Fantasy Football League. And we're all pull, certainly pulling for him, uh, both for his health and, and for the uh, camaraderie that we share. A um, couple other things I want to shout out to um, Public Works. I know we get on them about uh, cutting the grass uh, a lot, but Pops Ferry, uh, they, they, along Pops Ferry, they've been uh, making some progress. Uh, Tribe Drive is looking a lot better, and uh, along Brody Road as well, gotten a lot of positive responses from uh, the residents along there. Um, also, uh, Chief uh, Miller, I, the traffic committee, has there any, been any update on Pops Ferry Landing as far as any of the traffic controls or speeding controls that we had discussed? We'll try to get it together on the next meeting and see what okay. we. Okay, and uh, that leads me to the next thing coming up. I got a ward meeting, a uh, town hall meeting coming up on the 12th of October. Uh, so I'd like to uh, put together an agenda with the uh, department heads uh, so that we can have a, a good and spirited uh, meeting. It's going to be at the Blake uh, Retirement Community. Uh, my wife has uh, volunteered to do a push a rod of cooking class for the residents prior to the meeting, and then maybe we can enjoy some of those pressuratas during the meeting. Uh, the meeting itself will be uh, 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, and I also have a, a specific uh, meeting with the residents. Uh, they've requested I do a, a workshop on voter registration. Uh, so we'll be uh, doing that with the residents there and have a lot of fun. And that concludes my report. Uh, we got a lot on the agenda today, uh, including, I think, the need to have an executive uh, session. Uh, chair would like to entertain a motion uh, to go into closed session for the purpose of examining the necessity 
in an executive session to discuss uh, matters related to uh, personnel matters. So moved. Moved by Mr. Lawrence. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Gines. Thank you. Uh, chair will also uh, entertain a motion that the council will conclude the closed session and reconvene in an open uh, meeting. Do I have? So moved. Second. All right. Moved and second. Oh, I need a, a vote on the, on the first um, motions. Can I have uh, all in favor? Those opposed? All right. It's, uh, five to one or six to one. Uh, and then on the second, uh, which the second matter, which was a uh, motion by the same Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Gines. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Six to one. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Gines, any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Six to one. We'll be back shortly.
All right, the chair will entertain a motion uh, that the council concluded the executive session and no action was taken. Do I have a motion? No, I, I move. All right, moved by Mr. Lawrence, seconded by Mr. Gines. Any discussion? All in favor? Passes. We're back into session. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go into our public hearing today. Uh, we'll have opening remarks by the Director of Community Development. Uh, then we have a total allotted time of 30 minutes. There'll be 10 minutes for the appellate. There'll be 15 minutes for the opposition. And then there'll be five minutes for a rebuttal. Uh, and then the public hearing will be concluded. Okay. Director. Okay. This is an appeal of the approval of a tree case that went before the Planning Commission in June. The tree case was a companion case to a 52 lot preliminary plat subdivision case that also went before the Planning Commission located on Shorecrest Road. The tree application called for the removal of four trees, but with another 15 trees where part of the root system may be disturbed by the installation of the curb and gutter uh, infrastructure going in. The Planning Commission heard the case on June 16th and voted unanimously 12 to 0 to approve the application. The, uh, the representatives are here. That basically brings you up to speed on where we are today. So. All right. Thank you, Director. Who's going to speak in favor um, has 10 minutes. Are you, you're against, correct? You're against it. The applicant for the appeal. He filed the appeal. I'm the appeal. I'm All right, so you're the appellant? Okay. You have 10 minutes, sir. Thank you, sir. My name is David Hansen. I live in the property that's directly across the street from the proposed development. I am by profession a mapper, and perhaps that skews the way I look at things. I have turned over to you a copy of my speaking notes today as an introduction. One of my primary points is broken out in the letter which was served by my attorney. In that letter, subsection 2, subsection B, we identify that we do not believe that through the process the appropriate tree survey was turned over. And I want to talk about why that was. That's a primary point for me. I'll also be talking with limited time through sections D and E of the letter that was turned over. Let's talk about why I don't feel, according to reading the land development ordinance, and my attorneys don't feel either, that this applicant turned over an appropriate tree survey. Well, first off, we're going to talk about section 23-6-5-A, and I do have uh, some of this in, been handed out to you, and there's some uh, documents around it. Now, what's interesting is in the city of Biloxi, there are two ways a tree could be protected. One is by the nature of its species. The other is by the nature of its spatial location. You have a concept called a riparian buffer. How a riparian buffer works is that you cannot, in according to your land development ordinance, the section I just called out, remove any tree that is within 30 feet of a wetland, whether it's protected or not. That could be a pine tree, that could be anything. There is a particular picture, if you go a little bit further down, on page two here, of a diagram from your land development ordinance that outlines the 30-foot buffer. Now, what's of key importance is in your land development ordinance 5A1A, it says plans as submitted by the applicant approved for major site plans and preliminary plats shall show all existing wetlands and have them delineated or as shown by the National Wetlands Inventory and shall identify proposed uh, and proposed field or requirements of mitigation. Now, what's important here is I submit page three of the document that the wetlands as put forth by the developer were not the national argument is that what was submitted to the Planning Commission did not follow NWI. Therefore, there is no way to know what trees are within 30 feet of it to form the riparian buffer. Therefore, it does not make sense that there was approval of a tree permit. I call this out in the letter when I say that statements showing are to be removed. Uh, furthermore, also, uh, locations and species of all existing trees, including those proposed for removed or proposed to remain. That is all trees. Identifications of clusters of trees and that's also important. So the reason that we need to do that is that we look with a submitted application. It did not include number C uh, in the section, which is groups of trees in close proximity to one another, five feet or less. That's important because you don't need to just look across the property whenever there's wetlands. You also have to determine where the trees are that are protected by their spatial location 
for that 30 feet within it. Now, if you look down here, the planning commission at the bottom left is the peninsula that goes out. The area is what was said to the planning commission, the brown that overlays as the national wetland inventory. Now, Mr. Creel is very fond of saying about increasing and decreasing density and how that relates to, you know, when you have a parcel, you can do less dense, but you can't do more dense. Well, when you're looking at wetlands, you can add more wetlands, but you can't subtract what the government says is part of what's going on there. So this is a key issue for me when I say it was an incomplete uh, submittal of the tree survey. As we continue down uh, for some other miscellaneous issues that were raised, in the June 16th meeting, uh, the tree committee did identify eight lots of the 52, which they felt were declared undevelopable by the density of protected trees which were on them. I believe that's of great importance and something we cannot lose sight of. If you develop a lot and you sell it, as the developer, that secondary person that comes in is not going to have to put a private home on there. So we don't get a second bite at the apple is what happens. That older oak tree will then be the residence problem to be able to address that. I believe that that is where there's an issue with saying only four trees need to be removed to develop this land. Uh, additionally, at the Planning Commission meeting on June 16th when I was present, one of the commissioners had a disagreement with me on the idea of a chain wall and where that chain wall is going to go and the overall amount that it would have to raise. If we examine the western boundary of the train wall, the chain wall would have to go. We will see that with that increase in elevation, there are trees that will be basically the trunks will be underground at that point. Those were not called out as being affected or removed. I think that also is somewhat disingenuous. Uh, another concern that I have is that the land development ordinance follows uh, with the city of Biloxi and through your flood plain management, uh, the stormwater uh, phase two, which is also presented for and followed by Diagraville, Asquith, Shannon, Harrison County, and Gulfport. Uh, that, as part of that, with the stormwater pollution prevention plan, it outlines precisely how you should protect trees in this situation. Could you please go to the following page on page four? Uh, that outlines that the drip line itself is what must be fenced in. I have not seen in the letter that uh, there's no statement on how the trees are going to be protected and if there will be uh, compliance there, which is a requirement of your, uh, your land development ordinance to be able to uh, basically 23-6-F says that you're going to need to be able to turn that over. That's a required part of the application. We argue that was not done. Um, yeah, so I don't want to use my full 10 minutes. But I believe this is pretty cut and dry for me. I don't believe the National Wetlands Inventory was used on the plat. I believe that's the system of truth that we agree upon for your land development ordinance. Uh, therefore, I do not believe a riparian buffer could be accurately calculated. And I do believe that all the trees, according to your land development ordinance, once again, that are in the riparian buffer, must be protected. That wasn't called out or shown on the plat. Additionally, there are the other issues I've called out with the trees that were uh, identified on the plat and how they were called out. Although, I will say again, the clusters of trees should have been identified, not just the protected ones. And I would like to hammer home that in that riparian buffer, and you can ask Jerry about this to read the section to you if you would like, that that riparian buffer does not matter by species that is protected and that riparian buffer is calculated by the National Wetlands Inventory. So that's some of my points. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Opposition will now have 15 minutes. Good afternoon, Robert Schwartz. I'm an attorney here in Biloxi, here on behalf of Greg Williams, who was the original applicant in this matter. Uh, as Mr. Creel pointed out to you before, we had extensive hearings before the Planning Commission, and this is not one but two separate hearings on this particular matter. We had one back in June and another in August. Uh, to clarify, too, there are only four trees sought to be removed here. That includes one live oak and three magnolia trees. What the opposition doesn't tell you is that we're saving 169 protected trees by this development, including oaks and magnolias. I've had the pleasure of representing developers all over the coast in Biloxi, Harrison County, Gulfport, and other jurisdictions. Rarely have I seen a developer who tries to create a subdivision that has the minimum impact on trees. In this instance, we carved lots around trees. We moved streets not to impact trees. They did all this so they would have a very low impact on the natural vegetation and the trees there. The opposition uh, party attempted to buy this property and was unsuccessful in doing so. 
and he has opposed us at every level, uh, including he's opposed the subdivision application that was also approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. He's opposed the tree application. He's now appealed that to this body. Uh, he made a few comments that I'll address one by one. He addressed uh, a comment that there was no wetlands delineation. He's simply incorrect. The very data that he pulled up and showed you reflected a wetlands body that is not located in the subdivision. We addressed all this through the Planning Commission. There are no wetlands inside the area that will be the subdivision. The wetlands are all on an adjacent parcel. All of the wetlands are being donated to the Mississippi Land Trust, so we impact not a minute or any portion of wetlands in removing these trees or in platting the subdivision. Again, this developer has gone out of his way to try and do this in a positive manner to keep the natural beauty of the property present. Um, there was mention that there was no tree protection plan reflected the opposition clearly didn't look at the very documents that are before you. There is a tree protection detail or tree preservation detail that is attached to the proposal to remove the trees and it explains in detail how the trees would be protected during the removal process. Um, as Mr. Creel mentioned earlier, there is the possibility that will impact the root system of some additional trees. We acknowledge that. Um, our goal, though, is uh, not to destroy those trees. We could have taken an opposite approach and come and asked to remove all the trees that we would potentially impact, but the developer doesn't want to do that. He wants to save the trees that he can and impact the minimum number possible. So again, we're asking to remove four trees, and we're not talking about significant trees either, just so you know. The diameters on these trees, the magnolias, are between 9.45 inches and 16 inches, and the live oak is under 17 inches. So these are not beautiful majestic trees, although there are plenty of beautiful majestic trees on this site that we are preserving. Um, in addition, it's a little disingenuous when anyone shows up to oppose you when they tried to buy the property and they don't get to purchase it and now they want to stop you from using the property you have purchased. It's what I call the NIMBY argument, not in my backyard. Um, you know, if he had wanted to purchase this property, he had the right to do so. I would respect that. Um, I, I respect his right to oppose us, but his opposition is simply based on matters that are not appropriate. Um, there is nothing that we have done that doesn't comply with your plan. We met with the arborist. Um, I believe if Mr. Nolan is asked, he will tell you that he is in support of this proposition because we're trying to do a responsible thing by damaging the least number of trees possible for the development. Um, we have also offered to mitigate any trees damaged, including the four that we're going to be removing, and should any of the others be damaged during that process, we have agreed to mitigate those and to replant the appropriate number under your city ordinance, and we have agreed to do that on the property or wherever the city tells us you would like them planted. So we have an incentive, in addition to wanting to preserve the natural beauty of the site, if we damage something, we're gonna have to replenish it to the requirements of the city. So we have every incentive to not damage trees. Um, between the first and second hearing, my client also had the curb and gutter system redesigned so that we could impact less trees and so we could again try to carve around major root systems of these larger trees. So we have done, I think, much more than any developer I have ever seen come before this body or the Planning Commission do and simply ask for your approval uh, of our original application being to deny the appeal so that we can move forward with this process. Uh, I have Chris Riemann present with me today who is the engineer who engineered the site. Uh, I'm merely a lawyer, not an engineer, so if there are technical questions, he's here. I have Mr. Williams present uh, with us today too to answer any questions that you might have uh, for the council. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, five minutes for the rebuttal. I believe I was misheard, whether willfully or intentionally. I never said there was no delineation. What I said is what is shown on the plan is not the National Wetlands Inventory. Section 5 
A1A, plan submitted as per the application for approval for a major site plan or preliminary plat shall show all existing wetlands that have been delineated or are shown on the National Wetlands Inventory map. I stand before you again, and I tell you, this is plain and simple. The National Wetlands Inventory map is not accounted for by what is in the southwest portion of the plat. Accordingly, I do not know how this is a valid submission, becomes my question, by your own land development ordinance. That's pretty straightforward. Yes, I did try to buy the land at some point, but you know what? I looked at it and didn't think it was well developable because of my geospatial expertise. I thought it was a loser, is what went on. Um, and furthermore, my plan was not to develop it. It's simply across the street from me. I had some interest in it, looked at it, thought that surely no developer in their right mind was gonna go for that particular parcel. So, wasn't much concern. The wetlands which are being said are not on the parcel directly abut it. Uh, they're part of the current parcel pre-subdivision. Uh, and once again, I stand by the fact that you must submit the National Wetlands Inventory to the Planning Commission. If you send a document that does not uh, include the National Wetlands Inventory, and then it's approved based on that basis, I think we have a problem there. So that's a baseline argument, just throwing that out there. I, my, I believe, Janelle, do you have something you'd like to say? Rebuttal? Yeah, you have about five minutes left. Janelle Blum, 2909 13th Street, Gulfport, and I represent uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hanson. And I would just like to point out very quickly, we really should be stopping the conversation at they didn't comply with your ordinance. It, it, don't believe me, the tree committee pointed out at the very first at that June meeting that the application did not include all of the requirements, one of which is to identify all of the trees, not just the protected trees, but all of the trees on the property. That wasn't done, so we shouldn't even be having this conversation. There are items on your agenda today that you're going to be fining people or assess, putting assessments on, on people in their property. You're going to be declaring um, their properties a hazard to society and why because they aren't complying with your ordinance those are your rules you can change your rules if you want to but the rules that are in place right now have not been complied with and if this applicant should not have to comply with it then nobody should then you should not be assessing people for not complying with it and you should just let people do whatever they want to do on the property and as far as the um, the saving the trees the tree committee did point out, and it's in your report that was given, that this is highly unusual. You really are giving carte blanche on these other 15 trees in addition to the four. Whatever happens, happens. There are a lot of other protected trees. My reading of your ordinance is that once the, the pr preliminary plat's done, then they can go take whatever trees down they want, and then the homeowners can also, also do that, or the property owners when they're getting ready to build their homes. Um, they don't have to mitigate. They have a lot different requirements. So it's not just four trees in danger. 19 are in danger. One of the trees that's in danger is about 240 years old, and there are other significantly old trees that are within that 19. They haven't complied. Again, your report details it from the tree committee as to what needs to be done, what should have been as far as precautionary measures that should have been on the plans that are not on there. And at this point, all we're asking is to make them comply with your ordinance. And then that's the appropriate time for you to decide whether it's a good decision or a bad decision for the city of Biloxi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the hearing uh, portion of, of this the, on, on the trees. Do it. We do it when it comes up. Okay. Okay. When it comes up on the agenda to, to deny the resolution comes up. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to citizens' comments. We have a total allotted time of 45 minutes. Each uh, person, when you raise your hand and are recognized, come up to the front, sign in legibly, and state your name and address for the record so the clerk can record it. We'll start on this side of the room. Anyone that would like to come speak, raise your hand to be recognized. There being no one, we'll go to this side of the room. Anyone would like to come up and be recognized? Anyone in the back of the room? Okay, citizens' uh, comments is now closed. We'll move on. Move on to the policy agenda. 
the clerk would read item A, 4A. Ordinance to amend the land development ordinance pertaining to short-term rentals. Chair, entertain a motion. Moved by Mr. Tisdale. I'll second. Second by Mr. Barrett. Mr. Tisdale. Oh, I'm sorry. Just first reading. reading. Move on to item B. Ordinance to amend the compensation schedule and pay rates. This was moved by Mr. Gines, seconded by myself. Mr. Gines. Yeah, we, we had some discussion on this and um, just wanted to uh, say, we, of course, we need to, we need to go ahead and, was that, okay. Conversation and pay schedule is, and of course, uh, you know, I had a few questions uh, about certain things. And of course, um, I've always said that uh, a gallon of milk and bread costs the same for everybody. And so um, I think, I personally think there need to be some restructuring. Um, but of course, uh, the rest of the council felt that there need to be, we need to kind of move on. Uh, we have various opinions here with different things, but uh, of course I'm willing to give the mayor an opportunity to um, uh, make it right with a lot of them. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Gines. Um I seconded the motion, and I just uh, my, my comments on this is that uh, this is this is not over with by any stretch of the imagination. I've said that at our last meetings. We continue to work uh, through a lot of issues to see where we are on our on our finances, on our commitments, and uh, the mayor has uh, stated numerous times to this council that uh, he he'll be looking at all things and making the best decision that he possibly can to bring those uh, solutions to the council. Anyone else would like to comment? Yeah, I think there's a lot of discussion has been on this section of the, the pay raises. And I know, and we told you before, and this council feels the same way, you know, we're gonna stay with it and make sure we get things done to accomplish something for everybody in the city of Bluxton, the five and public works, folks and rec, everybody. That is something this council is committed to do, and we'll get it done. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Ms. Newman. Uh, just, I want to tell you guys that I appreciate you showing up. I know that you guys all have a vested interest, and we appreciate you holding our feet to the fire. I think we've, we have set some guidelines and some deadlines for the administration and the council to take action. Um, but again, I appreciate you guys showing up and, and uh, letting us know how important this is to all of you. Now, what he really said is, you're not going to play flag football. You're going to change it to tackle if, if he doesn't uh, make something happen. But no, it is a serious matter. Mr. Tisdale. Yeah, a couple of things. <clears throat> you know, I, would, I would note uh, publicly that there are nine changes to... I guess pay grades that are recommended in this ordinance revision or amendment. And of, of the nine, eight of those are to adjust the pay grades so that the positions pay more than what they are now. And one of those positions is moved down to a lower pay grade. Uh, that bothers me a great deal. Uh, I, I don't know what the explanation is. I'd be glad to hear one. Uh, if there is one, I would assume there is. Uh, but that that makes me uncomfortable. The second thing is that um, based on what was discussed and what I've heard today is that we might have a, a workshop, Mayor, you said maybe a, the third second Tuesday, second, second Tuesday in October. in October, okay. That way we should have the numbers in from September. Uh, I think that's a great idea. I think it would be a workshop to talk about some of the issues and concerns that those present here today would be able to hear publicly or whatever. And um, you had mentioned that, you know, we could look at some things creatively, which I think is a great idea. And at that time, they would be explained in detail. Um, I don't know if I don't know if you wanted to address that 
pay grade change for that position from grade 38 down to, I think it's 33. Well, not at this time, but, you know, we can address those, those things and, and uh, you know, I know you got to vote on it right now. Right, and, and like I said, I would, I would prefer that we had these discussions um, on pay raises for the remainder of the employees before we voted on this today, but I don't think that's likely to occur. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Barrett? Um, as I've said numerous times um, throughout the, the budget workshops and, and discussions on salary, I believe that our police department is the best, and I think you're well-deserving of this raise, but I also believe that our fire department is the best, and you guys are deserving of a raise. Um, and we're dying in public works. We don't have enough people on the streets to take care. We've got to give these guys a raise. Um, and I believe what we give has to reflect, be reflective um, to where it's not a question as to where these guys are, are, are we going to stay in Biloxi or are we going to go ply somewhere else? We have to make it to where they want to come to Biloxi and work in those departments. Um, we have a consensus between on the council as far as well as the administration and you have our word our, uh, what Robert said thank you guys for coming um, you have our word we're gonna work and we're gonna get this done as soon as possible and we assure you that we're gonna give you guys what you deserve thank you chair call for the question all in favor opposed motion carries 6-1 Item D. Resolution to deny the appeal, thereby affirming the decision of the Bluxy Planning Commission to remove four protected trees and disturb the critical root system of 15 trees upon parcels fronting Shorecrest Road. Chair, I entertain a motion for discussion. Uh, I'll make a motion right. for discussion. Moved by Mr. Barrett. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Barrett. Um, Jerry, um, in our ordinance, does it state that um, that not just the protected trees, but those that are surrounding it have to be identified as Mr. Hansen stated? Yes, there is a statement in there that says that. Has, has that been done by the applicant? I, I don't know if that is actually in the, uh, in the proposal that was submitted. I would, I would defer to Mr. Riemann who put together um, if if y'all okay. would like to call him to the well, front, he's okay. the one that actually. I, I have some more questions for you as well as Eric. Okay. The wetlands are there. Have all the wetlands been identified in the applicant's plan? Yes. yes. And yes. one of the one of the things that Mr. Um, Schwartz uh, didn't mention is that all of the wetlands on this property are being donated to the Land Trust of Mississippi. So, and that's one of the things that's suggested in our, in our ordinance is that if there are wetlands, so they're, the plan, the, the design that they proposed to us is to show that the wetlands are not included in any part of their development. Okay. And um, a couple questions for uh, Mr. Nolan, if you could come up, please. Thank yes, you. Sir. In your um, opinion, professional opinion, um, looking at the plat of this subdivision, mm -hmm. the four trees that have to be taken out and the possible 15 that the root system may be affected, is that all with this current plat, in your professional opinion, <coughs> that would be affected by this subdivision? That's the only trees that will be affected in order to get them to final plat? to get the infrastructure and the drainage and get them to the point where they can have legal lots of record then they would start but then when the home but the homes you can't just have a you can't just have an empty subdivision when the homes are built putting homes on these on these lots that are on the plat will other trees that are protected be affected absolutely okay. there, oh, there always are all right that's all thank you right. thank okay. you and um for whoever's the not you i, I thank you okay. that's all i have for you um for the developer, I have a couple questions, um, or the attorney, whoever's going to speak on your behalf. Um, you, of course, are the developer. I am. Uh, you will be um, um, the one clearing the property. 
the streets, the drainage, all of that in. Yes, will, this, will this subdivision, will the lots be sold individually or will the whole subdivision be sold to one developer um, to develop this, or not developer, one builder to build the whole subdivision out? Um, typically, we sell to one to one builder when we're built, but this subdivision with the uniqueness of the trees and all, we are wanting to do individual sales. Okay, that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can you just state your name for the record? Uh, Greg Williams. I live at 850 Wire Road East, Perkingston, Mississippi. Thank you. That, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. You say, you say. Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe the developer in this case has to develop, excuse me, has to present a tree application basically right what was was that tree application jerry was that completed in its entirety and accurately the tree application in the tree survey yes yes sir uh, uh mr nolan of course is the tree expert here and he actually walked the property with the uh with the uh designer mr mr reeman um the um, tree application that was submitted originally said four trees. If you'll recall, when that went to the Planning Commission, there was some confusion about whether it was actually four trees or maybe more. So the Planning Commission tabled it to allow Mr. Nolan to go back and actually go out and look at the property again to make sure that uh, it was only going to be four trees. And so. Uh, he went back out there and verified that it was only four trees. There were some revisions in there to uh, relocate the curb and gutter so that it would lessen the damage to any of the root systems on the trees and, uh, and came back in and went before it. Now, one of the things I think that influenced the Planning Commission in their decision was that uh, the uh, developer agreed that he would pay into the tree bank for those 15 trees just in the event that they didn't make it. His intention is to actually save those trees. And, he, and again, he could have come forward with an application that said, I'm just gonna remove 19 trees. And it would have probably been approved because the trees are in the, in the right of way, uh, the proposed right of way where the infrastructure is gonna have to come in. But his intention is to save 15 if he can and then as a safeguard, he would pay into the mitigation bank for those other 15 trees that may or may not make it. I'm thinking if, if this tree application is completed accurately in its entirety, then it should be clear to everybody what's, what's occurring. But in this case, Mr. Nolan went back with the developer and walked the property again. So there was some question or some issues raised, maybe I'm assuming due to it, the clarity mm -hmm. to clarify That's these correct. issues. So is there a particular standard that has to be met when this tree application is, is uh, completed? I'm, I'm noting the National Wetlands Inventory that Mr. Hansen referred to. Does that have any bearing at all or is, is there any connection to, or is that the standard used for that tree application? I, I am not the wetlands expert uh, for the city. I, I just don't know the answer to that question. I guess my, my and these questions center around the tree application mm -hmm. itself. I'm, and you're the only person in the room, I think maybe Mr. Mo Nolan might know. Mm -hmm. it, you know, is that part of the pro or is that the standard or is that part of the process to complete uh, the tree application? I mean, and, and I'm also thinking wetlands, the wetlands you, delineation for the tree application. Beg your pardon. Uh, are you saying that does the wetlands delineation have to be submitted as a part of the tree application? I, I, that's not what. No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm think I'm thinking, first of all, it's a big piece of property. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think anybody's going to walk and mark each of those trees. It's probably done in some other manner, whether, whether it's a, a drone survey or something, you know, but something is used to determine the tree, the trees identified mm -hmm. that, that may be impacted based on their location. And, and 
of course, that's part of what you have the tree committee for. And uh, I recall, because I attended those hearings, I recall that they, they had some questions about the information and the application itself. I think Mr. Hansen referred to that. I think it was discussed as part of clarifying exactly what trees and what the location was. And I, I, don't, I don't mean to be off in the weeds, but it seems to me that a lot of this centers on getting accurate information mm -hmm. uh, that's submitted on that tree application so that it's clear to everybody what's, what's going to occur, what the impact will be. Uh, but in this case, there, there still seems to be some confusion. Well, one thing I would suggest is that you uh, let Mr. Raymond step up here. He's the engineer, the project engineer for the entire design, and he would know what criteria was used to provide the information that he put on the site plan, so he could answer a lot of those questions. Okay, well, my question, thank you, I see Mr. Raymond, I want to acknowledge his presence, but, but again, I guess the central issue for me is, was an accurate tree application filed, or did it meet the standard of the city? Okay. And I'm assuming that if it did or would have, then the tree committee, which also checks on these things as part of its function, uh, would not have had any issues, but they raised some issues with that tree application. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I don't know that I need to speak with Mr. Riemann, but. Okay. Again, I'm not the tree expert. Uh, any tree matters or Mr. Nolan. Uh, he reviews the tree applications when they come in. He walks the property with them, so he could probably answer that question. Do, do you feel that our tree application form itself needs to be modified in some way after um, some of these issues were raised as, as questions. Will it be modified in some form or no, we'll keep the same tree application? We've form. modified it a number of times to keep up with the changes that were made to the tree ordinance. So there have already been a number of changes, but whenever something comes up that would make it more clear, certainly we, we modify all of our applications to, to simplify it so that it would be more understandable, yes. Right, okay. Thank you. The only, I guess the only other comment that I have is that the tree committee noted in their, I guess, recommendation or their opinions on some matters that, that, that there were a number of lots that would be unbuildable. I think there were seven or eight of them uh, simply because of the location of the trees. And as it was explained earlier, uh, those that are being going to be removed or impacted in some form or fashion, the developer is going to pay the cost of that either to the tree, uh, tree trust fund uh, or the per person who purchases that property is going to be the one who may decide based on where they build their house that that 200-year-old 200, 200 oak tree has got to go. Uh, what would the mitigation be for that 200 year old oak tree it, from Mr. Barrett here who's purchasing that property. Okay. If he's a, is he in the room? <laughs> Are you kidding? He's not leaving. I'm not leaving. This is his time to shine. Thank you, Eric. What is the mitigation for Mr. Barrett if he purchases that lot and has to remove that 200-year-old oak tree? Her protected tree that's going to be removed requires two, two replacement trees. If they don't plant them on site, it would be four replacement trees. And the cost per replacement tree this year is like 165 bucks. So 165 times two if they're planting on site, 165 times four if they're not. Right. And each of those replacement trees for mitigation would be about it's a two inch the two diameter of my wrist. Gallop, yeah, about the diameter. Exactly. What if the, would it make any significant difference if the developer removed that tree and said, here, we've got a lot? Nobody, somebody's going to remove it. Let's just take it out right now. Hey, I know that would, that would create another hell, hell storm if you were. Not really. That, sometimes the developers do make those requests. Uh, he has he has not asked for those because he's trying to keep as much as he can right. on the property. Okay, thank you. That's all my okay. comments. Thank you, Mr. Deming. Uh, first, I have a point of order. Um, 
did Mr. Barrett move A or B to approve the the the, the appeal to deny? Or B to deny the appeal to deny. Whenever I think he I, just. I whenever think, I moved it, I I just opened it for discussion, yeah. um, so I wasn't going one way or the other. When it, um, so I guess once we get done with discussion, we'll have to make that decision. All right. Um, I think you guys did a great job of addressing a lot of my questions. Um, I really don't have anything further to add. Okay. Anyone else going down the line? Mr. Lawrence. Uh, one question, Joe. Why did the Planning Commission deny it? The Planning Commission didn't deny it. They approved it. Yeah, the, the, plan, the reason, I believe the reason the Planning Commission approved it is because if you'll recall when we were talking about revisions to the tree committee, we talked about how difficult it is for subdivisions. That, you know, you have to reshape and, and, and re-topo uh, land in there, you know, to make sure the drainage flows a certain way. But uh, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to approve uh, Wait, tree application. Second. This thing on the table says to deny. So we you that's because of the appeal. The appeal. The appeal. Deny the appeal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what we're voting on. You're, you're voting well, whether to approve or deny the appeal. Yes. Well. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, they put it on the table to deny. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we had this straight here. All right. <laughs> Anyone else have anything they want to add? Mr. Barrett? Um, just going back to what my original question was, our ordinance states that whenever you request, or, or you have to not just state what the protected trees are, but the trees that are around it. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been done. So in in my mind, in in my mind, this application did not follow what our ordinance requires. I mean it's 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 black and white. It says that anything within a certain distance has to be included mm -hmm. and that hasn't been done. And so just for just for that reason alone, I can't support the application. Well, now, yeah, I mean, you, I asked that question, and, and you stated that that was the first question I asked you. As far, as far as the protection of trees go, what happens is, is that naturally the developer has to get approval that his project is going to move forward before he submits certain types of information. Uh, at, at the point that he gets ready to go out there and start grading or clearing this area, he'll have to submit a design showing the protective measures around the trees. It's, it's at that point, it's at that point that they submit something that shows where the um, fences or whatever the protective measures are, are going to be in. He just can't turn over any dirt until he's done that. I can't grant a grading or clearing permit until that happens. Okay. I have nothing more. All right, uh, I think we've ended the discussion. Uh, the chair does need a motion, either A or B, if we're gonna move move on this topic. Can, can you read what A and B are? Clerk, can you read item A and B? Item A is resolution to deny the appeal there by affirming the decision of the Bluxy Planning Commission to remove four protected trees and disturb the critical root system of 15 trees upon parcels fronting Shorecrest Road. Item B is resolution to affirm the appeal, thereby negating the decision of the Bluxy Planning Commission to remove four protected trees and disturb the critical root system of 15 trees upon parcels fronting Shorecrest Road. I'll make a motion to move item B. There's a motion uh, for item B. I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Tisdale. Discussion? Uh, yeah. I, what, I, I'm sorry. Discussion, Mr. Barrett? I, I have nothing. Mr. More. Tisdale? Right. In effect, we would be denying sorry, the sorry. denial. Um, but that would be, yeah, that would be form B of the choices available to us. All right. Thank In you. layman's terms. That would shut down the development. If we vote in affirmative on Mr. Barrett's motion, it shuts down the development. 
just want to be clear that that is what you're voting on, is to shut down the development. I, look, I'm not saying vote for it or against it. I'm not trying to sway your opinion. I'm just telling you, because it's confusing the way this has been done, this is just if a vote in affirmative just shuts down the development. Now, I think Mr. Creel has uh, stated that there is still some more work that has to be done from the developer before they can actually turn dirt over with regard to trees and removal. Is that correct? That's correct. I yield. All right. Anyone else? Uh, I, I kind of go with what Nathan said before. When you, you don't do these things right to start with, that's why you want to follow these problems. And we want to start doing our things right for the city and follow our own rules and regulation and our application, and the application not completed, then you can't vote on that. That's pretty simple. This is the rules we set up. Whether they're right or wrong, they're in place now. And if you don't follow the rules, then no, you should not get what you need if you didn't do the right thing in the beginning. Mr. Gines, any comment? No, um, I typically look at uh, resolutions and um, um, I see what the Planning Commission, uh, the, they, the resolution to deny the appeal based on what I'm reading here. And that's the direction I plan on going in. Ms. Newman, any, anything? Do you have any other thoughts? Uh, the only thing that gives me a little bit of pause is that uh, we asked a direct question of uh, the director, and there seemed to be uh, uh, some question in his mind, you know, that there is some kind of conflict with the LDO and what, what, how the application was uh, followed. And that's, that's just my two cents. Call for the question. All in favor of item B. Those opposed? Item B fails, uh, four to, three to four. I'll move to deny the appeal, A. All right. Second. Motion by Mr. Garns uh, to, to deny the appeal. Do you have to do that? Do we have to do that? Do we have to make a motion to deny the appeal? If, if the other? Put it on the table. I don't think so. I, I, I think it's a moot point. So uh, the. Well, I think we did that with item B, but by voting it down, the appeal is didn't go forward. So, all right. You have to vote on it. Yeah. What's that? Just I think you have still to vote, have to on, vote it. on it. <laughs> vote to deny. He voted on it. I'll, se I'll second the motion. All right. Seconded by Mr. Deming. Uh, all in favor? Those opposed? Yeah, Gines and Lawrence moved it, item A. Yeah, we originally moved, moved it. item oh, A. Okay. So, so we call for the vote. question. All in favor? We got four. Those yeah. opposed? Four, four, three. All right. Uh, motion on the consent. Moved. Moved by Mr. Lawrence. Second. Second by Mr. Gines. Mr. Lawrence. Uh, Fofo on E. You, uh, all you're doing is extending time. With the Gerald Patala? Yeah, yeah. Just, just extended hmm? the, the amount of time. That's right. I guess. I don't think he was voting that he was voting on. Because he just agreed with me and voted against me. I want to ask you to, uh, on F, the M.A. Howard the Consultant, what, what are they, what are we doing with them? Also, I had entry to an agreement with them, an amendment. And what did the professional service, what did they do? Howard, uh, M.A. Howard Consultant. Mayor, I may be able to answer that one for you if that's all right. Mayor. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, Councilman, that is uh, the continuing uh, amendment to Milady Howard. She's one of our project engineers we've hired to help uh, with our projects. This is an amendment to keep her uh, services going forward. It's ours, too. It's ours, like Gerald's. Milady. Milady Howard, yes. She's uh, one of our project engineers that works in the engineering department. Is this for MEMA or is it for the city of Bluxy? It's for the city of Bluxy, like Division Street for the Keith Gate projects, some of the projects down there uh, along the boardwalk, things of that nature. All right. Is that it? I'm just looking. Come back to you. Yep. Rachel. 
substitutions. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. Most of the substitutions were related to ARPA and, and the portal and, and addressing some of those things. So if you have any questions on any of those substitute items, Rachel here will give you the nuts and bolts of that. These all the ads. All the ads. All the, yeah, I didn't get to read that. What did we rescind it to? We rescind it. Are you rescinding something, put it over on the table to vote on it? Yes. What happened? The portal opened on September 1st. We have to get these submitted by September 30th. In an attempt to do that, we ran the resolutions last week. Since then, we've received updated project estimates for the cost. So we're rescinding the ones we did last week and adopting the new project costs, which are greater. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. There's one question I want to ask real quick on. They got S on the authorized and change order, and it's supposed to be not six, not five, because you got five up here, and this one here should be six on the second one. You got five dash six. We have, um, Councilman, we have three change orders related to the same project, but they're the same contract, but it's four, it's three different areas project uh, BEA one, BEA two, and BEA three. They're all the same type of change orders. They're to add insert of valves uh, on each of the project areas. You know, I'm just saying, you got change order number five, you got five. You got change order number five, you got six. I'm not talking about your beads and that. Yes. So you just got the wrong numbers I in there. <laughs> it was caught uh, in the corrections, I'm being told. Come on, on yes. As in Sam. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Who who's second it? Mr. Gines? Yeah. Okay. You're next. None. Nothing? Okay. Ms. Newman? Anything? Mr. Demon? Mr. Tisdale? Nothing. Mr. Barrett? Nothing. I have none. Any exceptions? Mr. Lawrence, any none. exceptions? None. Mr. Gines, Ms. Newman? Any exceptions? Any exceptions? No exceptions. All in favor of the consent? Those opposed? Motion carries. All right. We'll move on to. Can I ask him a question before he has the All right, before we move on, Mr. Demi wants to ask a question. I wanted to bring it up earlier, but I didn't want to take everyone's time, Mr. Creel. When I looked at the, um, the I read the transcript from the first reading from earlier, mm -hmm. and you said it was on clerk's page 11. You're right, it's on the transcript, transcript page 11. However, I guess I misunderstood the language in it. Do you guys not have to pass when you make amendments? Do you not vote on the amendments? Because what happened in, in that where the affirmative was, the affirmative vote, and it was unanimous, they moved to amend the word building to residential. And so the vote, the vote following that, I thought that was to make the amendment of that language. But I'm assuming that was for the whole thing total. Does the Planning Commission not vote on amendments before they vote in? No, whole? that was just that was just for clarity. Let me tell you, when when you mentioned the the IBC, the International Building Code, that is the umbrella name for all of the books that are included in that set. So the IBC, you can refer to the IBC. There is also one book that's called the IBC, but for clarity, what they wanted to do was to make sure that uh, we use the residential code <clears throat> because the landing sizes and the step requirements for residential is different than that for a commercial building. So that was brought up during the meeting and they, they voted on it. Now, I was not at that meeting. The mayor and I were out of town that, that day. Uh, but uh, when I came back and questioned Felicia about it, that's, that's how that came about. Right, so if you read the transcript, I, they said I move that we approve with the stipulation that the term building be changed to residential. Right, residential building code. Mm -hmm. And then they, they took a second on that mm -hmm. and then they voted. So. I assumed they were voting on that amendment to change the language, but what you're saying is they voted on the whole thing. They voted on the whole thing, yes. But there was never an affirmative on that change. And that, that's what I'm asking. Do you guys not need to affirm stipulations or amendments to language before you vote on it as a whole? 
Gentlemen, this isn't part of the agenda. I allowed a little, a couple of minutes for this, but we need to move on and follow our agenda. Y'all can have a sidebar and, and we'll get those that. questions answered. Uh, let's move to code enforcement hearings. If we go ahead and open those up. Okay. Go ahead and proceed. Item A, Corbett David Aguilard, 11433 Summer Lane. That case has been resolved. Okay. Item B, Dr. Basum Baruti. 1879 Beach Boulevard, that case has been resolved. Item C, BW Development, LLC, 1906 Beach Boulevard. We're gonna have to uh, table that one. Uh, I was informed yesterday that that property has been sold. This is the former Hooters location, and it's been sold to a restaurant chain. Anybody want to table Hooters? I'll move no. We'll, okay. we'll I'll table move Hooters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll second it. All right. The motion by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gines. All in favor? Yeah. Table it for okay. subject to call or whenever you bring it back up. Item D, Connell Lewis, 0 Deloney Street. That property is still in violation. Anyone here to speak on behalf of Cornell or Connell Lewis? Lewis? Okay. That property there, that RV is not abandoned, have a tag on the insurance, and it runs. And the uh, two trailers have a tag insurance on them. They run. Now, that stuff there right now, I took it to recycle over in St. Martin. I have 12 rental houses. When I take out the stove, refrigerator, washing machine, or dryer, and a dishwasher, I put them over there to accumulate enough to take to the recycling place. Sometimes I cover it up with a tarp, trying to wind blow it off. Uh, I said on that now, but I took out a, water, a dish in my a hot water tank yesterday, but this morning put it on the back of that trailer. So that stuff you see there is not on there now. I took it to the recycle. Only thing that's on there now is a hot water heater. Is that is that your testimony today? Is that your? Um, let me let me ask. That that's in my area. And I know Mr. Lewis pretty good. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the council to give 30 days, work with the city a little bit, and then I'll come by and I'll talk to you and we'll find out exactly what they're asking so we can have some clarity on it. And you'll have a good understanding and we'll have a good understanding. Because if the, if the RV has a tag on it and things like that and it's proper, then, then, then you know, that's one thing. And if it don't, then that's another thing. So I'm gonna just ask for 30 days so we can get some clarity on it. And I'll we'll bring it, it back before I'll the second council. Mo motion for 30 days by Mr. Gahn, seconded by Mr. Lawrence. All in favor? Motion carries. Got 30 days, sir. Work it out. Good luck. Item E, Chow No Knock, Zero Raynor Street. This property is still in violation. <coughs> is that mostly grass cutting, it, Director? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's mostly grass cutting. Yes, sir. It's the pleasure of the council for grass cutting. Cut the grass. It's grass cutting. Cut the grass. Yeah. Any any recommendations from the council? All right. Cut the grass. Anybody to speak uh, here on behalf of Chow Non Knock? There being no one, this case is closed. Item F, Gloria S. Powell Estate, 433 Cabot Street. This property is still in violation.
Anyone here to speak on behalf of Gloria S. Powell Estate? There being no one, this case is closed. Item G, Multana Sucranine, 1704 Beach Boulevard. This property is still in violation. <clears throat> Is that grass cutting, director, that I see up yes, there? Sir. Grass cutting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any recommendations by the council? Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of Herman and Be Belu? I'm sorry, Sukaran Jam Multani? Did the best I could. <laughs> there being no one, this case is closed. Item H, Herman and Beulah L. Smith, Estate, 262 Midway Street, still in violation. Any progress since we granted the 30-day extension? Yes. Um, Back Bay Mission called me yesterday to go out there yesterday. Uh, they It kind of fell off their radar. But I went out there yesterday and met with uh, Craig Steenkamp of Back Bay Mission, and they're going to have a crew out there next week. So, another J yeah, just one more time, man. We'll give them one more shot at it. All right. And uh, after that, is that a motion for thirty days? Yes, motion for thirty. Second. Days. Second by Mr. Lawrence. All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Routine agenda. Second. Moved by Mr. Lawrence. Second by Mr. Gines. Mr. Lawrence. Do we have any kind of updates or anything here? Yes, Councilman. On Monday, September 19th, the city received $3.76 million in reimbursement from MEMA. That includes an additional $165,000 for easements. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do we have another meeting next week? Okay. All right. None. Anyone else? All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Chair, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Moved by Mr. Tisdale. Second. By Mr. Lawrence. All in favor? Those opposed? We are adjourned. Good job. Oh, man. 322.